Hey everybody! The purpose of this video is to help you through problem 8.9.12 in the Collaborative Statistics textbook. Uh, in this one, it looks like it's an airline who is estimating average number of vacant seats per flight. Um, what they did was they went ahead and surveyed 225 uh, of their flights, I'm assuming randomly, yeah, randomly selected. Uh, on average, there were 11.6 seats empty, plus or minus 4.1. Okay, um, I want to stop right there and chit chat about that. That's all they gave us were those summary statistics of X bar, S, and N. Um, so we can't make a whole lot of claims about that. Okay, if it was bell shaped, if it were bell shaped, we might be able to decide about the samples data. But the beauty is we're not worried about the sample, we're worried about the implication of the sample. So what we're doing is we're taking those data values and we're going to crunch them. So what I did was, I ran the T interval. Now, I'm getting ahead of myself a little bit. Part B says, define X and X bar in words. Okay, this is, this is pretty important. X would be the number of unoccupied seats on any given flight. Okay, makes sense so far? Now, we don't know what the individual X values are. All we know is that the total number of seats on all 225 flights would be equal to that times that. That would be how many how many seats were empty over the entire flight. See if you can convince yourself of why that's true. I'll give you a hint. It's because the average is defined to be the sum of x over n. So if you multiply x bar times n, you get the sum of x. I didn't come here to tell you that though. <laughs> we came here to talk about this. So anyway, we don't know the individual data values. We also don't know if any of them were outliers. For example, the average is 11.6 plus or minus 4.1. What if a lot of those seats were ones and twos and threes, and there were a few planes that were half full? Would that average out to 11.6 with a plus or minus 4.1? It very well could numerically. So if you had outliers, I would kind of suspect using what I used here. We'll come back to that again. Anyway, X is any one flight's number of unoccupied seats. X bar, as we talked about before, is the average of all 225 of them. Good so far? Okay. Don't worry about N minus 1. That's irrelevant. We'll come back to why that's irrelevant in a second. Uh, which distribution should you use? Well, I say use the T distribution because we're estimating an average number of seats. Okay, I granted it's a number of seats which is counted, which is discrete. However, it's an average number of seats, not a proportion of empty seats, an average number of seats. So I'm going to go with a T distribution. The textbook will argue that you can use the Z distribution because it's above a sample of 30. I say, why not just use the T? It basically looks like the Z anyway. So we're going to go with the T distribution. I ran the T interval and I got this. Let me back up again. The reason I was harping about outliers earlier is because this T interval, 11.1 seats to 12.1 seats, which would look like this. Uh, 11 point, oh, I didn't scale this right at all. Let's do this. Let's call this 11. Yeah, and then we'll call this guy over here. Yeah, that's fine. That would put 11.1 would be ish. So we got, we got to go to here. 12.1 will go to there. There is the sketch T interval. Next bar is going to be right in the middle of it, right there. As soon as you run a T interval, you assume that your data satisfied the requirements of roughly bell shaped data, no goofy outliers. I can't tell either of those two things, and I told you in class you can kind of ignore the bell shape bit, as long as there's no glaring outliers. I can't tell that from this data, and it's quite possible that there are outliers in that data, and I don't know if there are or not. So I'm going to assume there aren't. I'm going to assume that since they want accurate data, they're not going to let this get uh, inflated too crazily. So there is the sketched confidence interval, which is based on the T distribution. That's why I said don't worry about the n minus 1. The n minus 1 is taken care of in the calculation using technology. The important thing is to make sure you know what it means. Now this is a goofy one. They wanted us to use a 92% confidence for whatever reason. So you can state 
that you are 92% confident that the average number, this is the population average, of vacant seats on board one of this airline's flights is somewhere between 11.1 .1 seats and 12.1 .1 seats. That's what you can state. You can state that you're 92% confident that it's above five, it's above six, it's above seven. You're also 92% confident that it's below 15, below 16, below 17. You cannot say that you can tell if there's a difference between say 11 and a half and 12, because both of those are in the interval, so you can't tell the difference there. But you can make any claims about the values inside versus outside. There's your interval. There's a sketch of the interval, so we've gotten part D, part one, D part two, the error bound is just the margin of error. What is the plus or minus? Well, if the average is 11.6 and the bottom of this interval is 11.1, that's a half of a seat, 0.5. Half of a seat, error bound. Half of, half of a seat on the upper side gets you to 12.1. So there's your error bound. So the biggest question I have about this study is not the resulting numbers, because I think we got that taken care of pretty nicely. The biggest result, the biggest question I have about this study is, should we even have used the T distribution if we had outliers? And the question is, what can you use if you don't use a T distribution? Your project number three will actually deal with that when we get to it. But for right now, we have to use the T and assume that the, uh, that the, that the distribution is okay, is all rightly described, Oof, terrible English, is properly described by the T. Cool, hope that helped.